Laura Barnstable this morning on this Tuesday morning, just about seven minutes past the top of the hour. I'm Sarah Colvin, and joining me live on the phone, Chief of Police of Paul McDonald. Chief, good morning. Good morning, Sarah. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, so, Chief, a number of things to talk about today. Going to start, of course, at headlines in the Cape Cod Times today and things yep. that we've been talking about as well, of course, is the needle exchange that's been operating uh, on South Street in Hyannis. Uh, was shut down in late September, has been open for the past week of, uh, due to a, a Board of Health uh, reprieve. Right. Tell me a little bit from your perspective, uh, you know, what the issue is here. Well, um, for first, I'm a little disappointed that the Board of Health um, gave them the reprieve of one week. You know, in my, in my opinion, um, the cease and desist order should have remained in effect until the aid support group, you know, went through the proper procedure. There's a proper procedure outline of what they should do if they're going to open a needle exchange program. It's, it's relatively simple. You get approval by the Department of Public Health, and you go through your, to a local municipality, and you get uh, local permission either from the Board of Selectmen or from the Town Council. In our case, we've been Town Council, and they chose to do none of that. Um, they've been operating, in my opinion, you know, illegally for a number of years. The Board of Health, though, in their wisdom, um, trying to prevent a court case, uh, they they try to find some come up with some type of compromise that the town can work with the aid support group attorneys and come up with some type of solution where possibly they could remain open. However, the aid support group chose not to go that route. Um, from what I understand, reading the paper this morning, they're going to file suit against the town to reopen this um, um, this needle exchange program, which, which to me is, is the worst thing that could possibly happen. And for them to make a statement that you know, hepatitis C and HIV are entirely preventable, and the town audit has put human life in incredible jeopardy. It is such an arrogant, asinine statement to make. You know um, what they're doing and the way they're conducting their businesses is they're jeopardizing the the health of of everyone who lives and works and visits downtown Hyannis. I mean, it's out of, from what their their own statement they made at the hearing is in in the first ten months of 2015 they've given out over 112,000 hypodermic needles in the village of Hyannis. Now, who, how, how can we possibly, you know, with, with the, I, I know we have an opiate problem in downtown Hyannis, but to the extent of giving out 112,000 hypodermic needles, that, that, that is just insane. I mean, there's, there, 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 there is no checks, there, there's no monitoring program, nobody, nobody is down there overseeing what, what they do. And to me, it's such a total irresponsible agency. And, uh, and, and to me, I'm kind of glad it's going to court. You know, I think the town should take a, should, should take a hard line on this, or go to court and, uh, and see and see what happens. And we think too, Chief, you know, we look at our, our restaurants and, and some of the farmers markets and other businesses that really need to seek approval from so many different uh, organizations Correct. here in town before opening their doors. Right. Uh, one would think that, uh, you know, that, that a, a organization such as this would have to, uh, you know, have the same treatment as well. So I think we'll certainly uh, keep our eyes on this. I know the Board of Health is meeting later today to, to pick up the discussion once again. Right. I mean, if you just talk to DPW workers, you know, you know the, the guys, the workers who, who work at the town green, who work around the bandstand and, and talk to them and see the number of needles they pick up on a daily basis. It's it's incredible, you know. And I know they they gave they say they gave out 112,000, took in 114,000. I, I would really like to see a documentation that that could sustain those kind of numbers. Indeed, Chief. Well, we certainly will keep our, our eye on this issue. As we know, you know, we've talked about uh, the, the opiate crisis that we're experiencing in our community, and certainly uh, this is a, is a big part of that. And this isn't going to help. Indeed. Uh, Chief, I wanted to talk about, uh, of course, uh, an event that's going to be happening on Thursday morning at the Barnstable Police Department at 10 o'clock in the morning. Three new lieutenants will be sworn in. Tell me about these new lieutenants. Right. There are three vacancies. Uh, lieutenant Walker retired. We made two deputy chiefs. Um, lieutenant Balcom, Lieutenant Sonnenbin uh, were promoted from the rank of lieutenant up to deputy chiefs. That created three lieutenant openings. Uh, we, gave, we gave the test. Um, we went through the process. Um, the town manager then selected um, three new lieutenants, uh, Lieutenant Gene Chalice, who is a 17-year uh, veteran for law, enforce law enforcement, um, 13 years with the BPD. Uh, prior to that, she was with the uh, Situate Police Department. Um, Sergeant Cabral being promoted to lieutenant. He is a 13-year veteran of the uh, Barnstable Police Department. Um, local kid grew up in downtown Hyannis. Um, and the third third individual is Sergeant Malin. Um, uh, he's being promoted to lieutenant. He's a 20-year veteran of the department, and he's currently, uh, he grew up in Osterville. And he's currently a uh, detective uh, sergeant uh, working working in the investigative services division right now. So it's a uh, it is this important uh, it's an important step for these three individuals in, in their career. We're looking forward to uh, getting them on board. Sure. So, Chief, what does this promotion mean? How do the duties change from sergeant to lieutenant? Well, they go from you know the the sergeant rank is a supervisory position. You know, this is a command rank. Uh, what these what all three of these officers will be taking over shifts or divisions. You know, Sergeant Charles will be eventually taking over the day shift. She will be supervising four sergeants and 27 patrol officers, you know, but she also takes over the, the uh, CIU unit, um, the traffic the traffic 
rescue unit, the mountain biking unit, the marine unit, um, and a number of other units that work during daytime. Um, Lieutenant Cabral will take on midnight shift, and he will have 24 four sergeants and 24 patrol officers. Lieutenant Malin will be taking over the executive services, which means he'll be responsible for doing all the internal affairs, the hiring and promotions of all of all individuals within, within the police department. So they, their their career is, is their their jobs are totally different now. Absolutely, well, we look forward to congratulating them on Thursday. But before that happens, of course, the annual Veterans Day parade is going to take place uh, right around uh, where we are uh, here at Town Hall. Uh, tell me a little bit about the Veterans Day parade. The schedule. parade will set up tomorrow morning at 9:30 to the rear parking lot of the Town Hall. Um, the parade will step off exactly at 10 o'clock. It goes out to South Street, up to Old Colony, left on Old Colony, left on Main Street, then back into the Town Green for the uh, for the ceremonies and some dedication and some speeches. So we're looking forward to this. This is a great event and I really hope the weather holds off for us. They're, uh, they're saying it's going to be cold, chilly and windy so it's uh, mm -hmm. hopefully holds off a little bit. Absolutely. Now are there any road closures that are uh, associated with this parade? I know it's a pretty short parade. It's, it's, a, it's a short parade. Uh, we don't really close the roads down except during the parade. Uh, we'll have a number of cruises uh, form up behind the parade so it'll be like a rolling roadblock uh, behind the parade on, on the South Street and on the Old Colony so it's uh, we don't really close any of the roads down but some of them they, you, they will be limited traffic for maybe five to five or ten minutes. Great. Uh, and the last question I have, Chief, uh, just looking pa back over the past week, uh, how were things in terms of uh, activity for you in the department? Well, there was a search warrant issued last Friday at 5 o'clock in the morning at 28 Manny Circle. Um, this has been a residence that have been, uh, I cannot tell you the number of calls that we've had from the neighborhood. This has been a real concern, problem property that we've been trying to deal with. Um, our detective, Detective Cronin, assigned to the uh, Mass State Police uh, Drug Task Force, along with members of that task force, um, they executed a search warrant at 5 o'clock last Friday morning, and they arrested uh, Mr. James Anderson. Um, I'm sure, yes, Mr. James Anderson of 28 Manny Circle, um, and he's been well known to us. There's been an ongoing investigation there. When they executed the search warrant, they got, uh, I believe, trafficking weight in, blows, in both heroin and cocaine, and at the same time, they recovered a loaded handgun under his pe under his pillow. So that was a huge case, and it'll go a long way to help that neighborhood because I know they've been up in arms. We could be out of the house for a number of months. Absolutely. Well, Chief, I thank you so much, uh, as always, for joining us here on Barnstable this morning. We will check in with you again next Tuesday, and we'll see you later on this week. Have a great day. Okay. Talk to you then. Bye-bye. Chief of Police Paul McDonald joining us, of course, as he does every Tuesday morning. Uh,